Hey guys, what's up? Patrick Freeman here in Chongqing, China. Yes, the background is a little bit different. I'm actually here in my office uh, here in Chaoyuan, which is just east of uh, Chongqing by a couple of miles. Uh, I'm doing something a little bit different today. I just wanted to share with you, you know, my thoughts, my feelings, uh, what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing regarding the uh, coronavirus. You know, it started uh, just a couple of weeks ago in Wuhan, and Wuhan is about a two-hour high-speed train ride to Chongqing, and this virus has spread it like you would not believe. And I'm sure you guys in the West are, are reading all the news about it. Um, but again, I'm kind of going to kind of give you a perspective uh, that I have here in China. A friend of mine by the name of uh, Mikkel Larson, we've actually done a couple of uh, videos together, or episodes together. He's helped me out as well. Uh, he works for Ai Chongqing, which is a government media distribution company here in, uh, in Chongqing. And he just sent me this article that talks about basically it's an update as to as far as the number of people and just additional information so what i'm going to do is read a little bit of this to you and just you know give you kind of really this was sent to me today and it was this morning so it's relatively new information so it says uh, the number of confirmed cases caused by the new coronavirus pneumonia disease rose to 27 in southwest china's chongqing municipality as of thursday midnight an increase of 18 cases from the day before, according to the Chongqing Municipal Health Commission on the morning of January 24th, 2020. Among them, three new cases were in critical condition, five in total, and one in dangerous condition, one in total. And it lists uh, probably like six or seven different uh, districts. Uh, Daduko, which is one that I'm actually very familiar with, and it was just there probably two or three weeks ago. Uh, health authorities have traced 224 people in Chongqing who had close contact with the patients and are all un under medical observation. Uh, the Chongqing Municipal Medical Treatment Expert Team has strengthened it. Basically, this is just information about what the, the government, the local government's doing to um, minimize the spread of this. I mean, they're, they are spraying buses on a daily basis with disinfectant. Uh, they are spraying the classrooms at school with disinfectant. I mean, you can smell Clorox pretty much everywhere you walk, which is good because you know, I mean, Clorox has a very distinct smell and you can smell that it's all over the place. So as far as total throughout the country, uh, Chinese health authorities announced Friday that 830 confirmed cases of pneumonia caused by the coronavirus have been reported in 29 provincial level regions in the country by the end of Thursday. Among them, 34 have been cured and discharged from hospitals according to the National Health Commission. A total of 1,072 suspected cases have been reported in 20 provincial level regions, according to the commission. Uh, you know, reading the, the news in the West, it's spread from China, it's gone to Japan, it's gone to Korea, it's gone to Thailand. There's one suspected case from what I read this morning in the United States, a student uh, from A&M that uh, may have contracted it. I believe they have him quarantined right now in their you know, going through the testing procedures to see if he has it. So that's kind of really the information, what the, the most up-to-date information that I have uh, here in Chongqing. I will say this, uh, this is Chinese New Year's. Today is January 24th. Again, it's about three o'clock, 3.10. And the municipality is actually starting to close famous tourist spots just to keep this from spreading. So for example, Luhan Temple, uh, Nungren Temple will not be open on Chinese Lunar New Year Eve Friday. Starting from January 24th, Chongqing Art Gallery, Chongqing, and I've been there, I was just there actually uh, last week, Chongqing Natural History Museum, Chongqing Folk Art, Folk Art Theater, and Chongqing Library will be closed. The Chongqing China Three Gorges Museum, I've been there before, and the Underwater Museum. So there's a couple places quite a few places that are being closed as a result of this virus and the government being proactive to, to stop this. So that's the information. Now let me kind of give you the, the emotional two sides of the fence. Uh, I'm part of a WeChat group for expats. There's about 325 of us on there and it's basically a health WeChat. It's, it's an informative, hey, I need this kind of doctor who speaks English or I'm having this problem, what do you think I should do? There's a lot of doctors on there who uh, you know, have been really supportive and helpful to a lot of the expats 
uh, regarding you know those times that they get sick. So there's been a ton of posts from various doctors regarding the the virus and a lot of it's just been updates what you can do to protect yourself there's been a couple of times where some of the uh, group chat members have gotten offended or angry with some of these posts informative posts uh, telling people what's going on they have gotten offended because they think that they're fear mongering and trying to spread fear there was one guy just the other day that said you know, there's more deaths concerning the flu and car wrecks and that kind of stuff. And that's that's true. Uh, but he just got really, you know, offended that this guy was trying to update everybody. So that's that's one side of the fence. You've got the other side of the fence where I'm hearing that, you know, Chinese people, Chinese reporters are getting upset with the government because they're not disclosing the true numbers of this coronavirus. And I think it uh, reminds a lot of people what happened back with the SARS epidemic. I think that was back in 2003, 2004, where not all the information, all the true cases uh, was being disclosed. So, and I think it's important if that's, if that is happening, um, I think it's important that they fix that because if there's a lot more, then that's where who needs to get involved, the World Health Organization, they need to come in. There's additional uh, support, there's additional money, there's additional people that can come in and help squash this thing. So I, quite honestly, I think they should have been involved two or three days ago, if not sooner. But uh, that's my opinion. How do I feel about this? I'm not like overly concerned for me because I'm 50. I work out three or four times a week. I'm in, in relatively good shape. From what I've read, most of the cases have been older individuals, 60 plus, that uh, are already sick. Uh, already have some other health issue that really has kind of compounded the problem with this coronavirus. And unfortunately, there's been quite a few people that have died from it, which is, you know, very sad when something like this happens. So just keep these people in your prayers and keep the government in your prayers that they do the right thing, that they do everything they can through wisdom and knowledge to, to squash this issue. You know, like I said, I'm being, I'm protecting myself. I've got, uh, you know, the mask, I've got the disinfectant wipes, and I'm trying to stay away from any large groups of people. You know, just pretty much staying here at the house, watching TV, doing videos, doing editing, that kind of thing. I'm off for the next seven or eight days, so um, won't be going anywhere anytime soon. This, this coming Sunday, I was invited to be a part of a YouTube show. It's called Let's Be Frank, and it's run by a guy named, it's hosted by a guy named Frank. Uh, another guy, Alex from Reporterfy Media, is going to be on there. Actually, I met Alex probably two or three weeks ago. He's a YouTuber, and uh, we were, you know, hooked up. Uh, my friend Mikel actually hooked us up, and we... Uh, you know, kind of mad about my channel and he was giving me some direction, advice on things to do. But since then, we've kept, kept in contact and he invited me to be on this particular show because they're going to be talking about uh, what's happening here in China with the coronavirus. And there's going to be a, a live show on a, this Sunday, this coming Sunday, China Sunday, 11 a.m. China time. So depending where you are in the world, what I would do is just go to Google and type in... Uh, you know, figure out what the time is is pretty easy. But 11 a.m. China time, Frank from Let's Be Frank. And we're going to talk about more in detail what's going on here in China. And I'm sure by that time, again, today's Thursday, in the next couple of days, there's going to be a lot more updates as to what's happened and the number of cases, the number of suspected cases. I'm going to go spend some time with uh, Toy Toy's parents, have some dumplings, and try not to think about what's going on. I'm going to watch some TV, probably do some editing. That's it, guys. I appreciate your time. Keep us in your prayers. Keep the people that are sick in your prayers, the families that have lost people in your prayers, and just pray that this thing is squashed as soon as possible.